Hey y'all, Moses here. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different for this training room video. We're gonna be talking about how to set up your stream or YouTube for the maximum possible quality uh, when live streaming. Now this is something that I've kind of learned over time. I've been streaming on Twitch and YouTube for about a year and a half now, and I have learned a lot along the way. I started with nothing as far as knowledge is concerned, and over time I've kind of built something that is relatively functional and doesn't break all the time, which is all you can really ask from a streaming setup. So you can see I'm here in my little uh, my little area. Uh, it's this is this is as, as advanced as it gets. So if this doesn't look exactly like the way you have it set up at home, don't worry about it. Uh, but uh, what I want to do is talk about the hardware and the software, and mostly the setup portion. Uh, for those of you who have been asking, and for those of you seeking knowledge on how to use a two PC setup for streaming. So I'm going to be focusing on the two PC side of things. Single PC setup is a lot easier. So lots of guides on how to set that stuff up. Uh, but uh, the reason I'm doing this video uh, is because I've recently upgraded hardware. This is the Orion 9000 from Predator. It is powered by the i7-8700K, a beast of a processor, uh, something that you need to have at the heart of any streaming, streaming setup, uh, single or dual PC. You have to have a beefy processor as it will be doing a lot of work. So again, we'll be going through all the settings and setup of my two PC stream setup. And if you have any questions, don't forget to leave a comment down below. It's an advanced level tutorial. So some of these things might be beyond you if you're brand new to this stuff, but I'll try and keep it as simple as possible. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is start with OBS. This is kind of the heart and soul of any broadcast. And uh, just for reference, the current version I'm on is 22.0.1. That's the newest OBS version. So what you want to do first is uh, get the program installed, of course, and then get into settings. Now, I'm going to assume that most of you have already had OBS set up at one point or installed at one point in the past. If not, then maybe it's time to go back and check out some beginner settings videos. Uh, but for now, I'm going to say uh, let's start with uh, making sure that your stream is all set up, making sure your key is input properly. There's not a lot of uh, in here that in general that I think you really need to work with just yet, um, but we'll focus for now on output. Make sure that your output mode is set to advanced and then we'll go from there. So the first thing we want to start with is streaming. Now for streaming, I have my bit rate set to 8,000. Now that's a little bit high. Uh, the maximum bit rate that Twitch will allow is 6,000. Uh, if you're a Twitch partner, I believe you have access to transcoding ability so you can go beyond that 720p limit that is recommended. 1080p is possible, but if you have folks that are farther away uh, or don't have the ability to uh, change their transcode if you're a non-partner, um, it might be a little bit problematic. So for now, we'll say that everyone should have theirs set to 6,000, which is uh, the maximum that Twitch will allow you. Uh, the buffer size sh uh, should match that. Um, I'm not sure why I heard that uh, from someone that... Uh, when I was having problems uh, when it came to dropping frames. With this setting, I've never dropped any frames. So you can use a custom buffer size, set it to match your bit rate, and you'll be good to go. Make sure your keyframe interval is set to two. That's uh, a Twitch default, so that's basically a non-negotiable. Now, CPU preset is uh, related to image quality. Now, it is very granular, uh, this image quality. Obviously, uh, you can get all the way, like uh, the, the slower it is, um, the longer it'll take to encode and the better image quality. I have mine dead center as fast. Now, if you have a decent second PC for streaming, you should be able to get away with fast relatively easy. If you're using an Intel processor like the 8700K, um, you'll be good to go on basically anything all the way down to probably slow or slower. Um, but uh, I leave mine on fast just for the flexibility. My profile is main, no tunes, and no X264 options. Now, just to go back a little bit, your encoder should also be X264. Make sure your rescale output is uh, is not set at all just yet. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, same thing for recording. Uh, if you have uh, an NVIDIA a graphics card in your um, in your streaming PC, you can use it as a secondary recording option, so you don't tax your CPU. You cannot record and stream on the same uh, on the on the same processor most of the time. Uh, it just won't allow it. So if you have even just a 1050 Ti or something small. Uh, you can record your streams very, very easily. And for reference, here is what my uh, streaming recording is set to. 24 megabits per second, which is 24,000 bit rate, relatively high. Um, you really shouldn't be going much higher than that unless you're trying to get a 4K record or something like that. Uh, but uh, I have mine set to high quality. 
profile again is main levels auto and uh and that's that so now my nvidia encoder is the one i'll be using for the encoder setting it's grayed out because i'm recording right now um, but yours it should all be uh, should be available so let's jump down quickly to video so what i have here is a base canvas resolution of 1920 by 1080 and it is matching in the output as well because i stream at 1080p you can have a base resolution of 1920 by 1080 and downscale your resolution here to 720p if that's your limit uh, 720p is a perfectly fine resolution uh, 1080p is for those with decent internet connections uh, or for twitch partners who have the ability to have transcoding options available for their viewers so they can reduce the resolution as necessary the downscale filter should be lanxos uh oh i'm maybe i'm not saying that correctly but the sharpening scale 32 samples this is if you're downscaling uh your your video this should help with sharpening up your image and of course you want to make sure that your fps value is set to 60. This is important so you can have that 60 FPS output and have that stream look really nice and smooth. And uh, to just talk a little bit about the hardware side of things, you can see here down, I have an Elgato um, sound capture card. I use the Elgato 4K60 Pro. That's the best uh, capture card on the market for general consumers. It can, it can capture uh, sources all the way up to 4K and you shouldn't need more than that. Um, actually, I don't think you can get more than that, but regardless, uh, the Elgato sound source will be coming along with your uh, with your Elgato uh, display source once you have that set up properly. Again, in my opinion, Elgato and uh, capture card setup is a basic of streaming. I'm not going to cover capture cards in this video. We're going to be focusing primarily on settings. So uh, that's it for OBS. Let's move now over to the audio side of things where things get a little bit trickier. So now that we've covered OBS, I want to quickly walk you through Voice Meter Banana. Voice Meter Banana is my uh, audio processing program that I use instead of a hardware mixer. Hardware mixers easily introduce noise, especially around all the electromagnetic um, sources like video cards, which are massively uh, noisy when it comes to audio. Uh, so I've gone as far digital as possible. Now it's fairly easy to set up, but it's a little complicated and maybe a little daunting to look at if you've never seen this program before. So essentially what you have are three hardware inputs and three hardware outputs. The hardware outputs are easy. The first one or one of them should uh, be your capture card on your streaming PC. So in my case, it's the 4K60 Pro. So open up A3 and select your capture card and make sure it's set there. The second one should be your headphones because all of the audio going into voice meter should go to your headphones because your game sound and everything will be coming through this program as well. Uh, in my case, I have an ASIO device uh, the USB uh, interface that my microphone uses. So don't worry about this ASIO stuff. You can, you might even have an open input here. So don't worry about having everything populated. You can even have this go off to a separate output if you like, uh, however you want to use that. So uh, the first thing you want to make sure is having your microphone set up in slot number one. You can right click this and set the name. Mine's set to microphone. The next thing you want to do is left click on this and then set your input device, whatever it might be. If it's a headset mic, it'll all appear here. Mine is my USB interface for my dynamic microphone. So you can see here, it's picking up my audio and everything is great. This uh, stuff, don't worry about this just yet. The reason I have this turned off is because I don't want my voice in my headset. And that's kind of the basis of these A2, A3 buttons. If I were to click this right here, that would mean that this signal being put in here will go, you guessed it, to A2. Everything that's green here will show up in this hardware output. So a3 being green means that my 4K60 Pro capture card is picking up my microphone. So if you're following along closely, that means that your voice is being transmitted through voice meter to your capture card, and you'll see that audio signal in your capture card device on OBS. Success, your voice is going from one PC to the other. Easy peasy. Now, the hardware, uh, the hardware stuff is relatively easy, but uh, just a quick reminder when you set up voice meter to make sure that your default device for playback is set to voice meter input. That'll make sure that all of your sound is going to the primary virtual input here. So the idea is that game sound and whatever else, uh, your desktop sound, everything is going to be going to your default device, which will then be put through voice meter through the power of science. And you'll start seeing this bar moving around here uh, when you're in game or in browser or listening to music or whatever you like, depending on how you have your audio sources split out. So now that you've seen your game sound moving around in this box, Again, you want to make sure that A3 is checked so it's going to your capture card and A2 so it's going to your headphones. 
that'll make sure at the very least that your microphone and game sound is going to your gaming or through your gaming PC and into your streaming PC. So at the very least, you should be functional to stream at this stage. There is a little bit more to set up here. Uh, I'll give you a brief glimpse uh, because it's very complicated uh, and a little bit beyond what I think this guide should be. So the first thing I've done is I've downloaded the VB audio cable again from voice meter. Uh, that is essentially a virtual audio cable. So what that means is I set my virtual audio cable to this output right here or this input rather. And that means that I can set my discord to come through here as well. So I'll just show you what I mean very quickly with discord. So that means you set your output device to the matching input right here. So that means that all your discord sound, is now going to be coming into this hardware line and then you can again make sure it goes to your headphones via A2 and to your stream via A3. That means you can have Discord in your head but not to your stream if you like uh, and you can use this audio cable for a multitude of different programs. I use uh, the paid version of this program so I have a second audio cable which I use with Spotify. Now for those of you who want to split out Spotify uh, from your main audio channels you can download a separate program and while well, you have to pay for it, uh, it's called eQualify. And that means you can set in the settings of eQualify which device Spotify plays its music to. So in this case, I have it set to my hardware input number two called cable output. And again, the benefit of that is being able to split off uh, the music signal from your headphones as well as the stream. So let's say you want to have background music on your stream but not through your headphones you can just disable the headphones portion and have audio input from uh, Spotify going to your stream in a two PC setup. You can use this for things uh, like uh, playlists uh, or for music requests on stream if you want to play that music without it interfering with your gameplay, whatever you might be doing. This is a little advanced and, and takes a little experimentation, but once you get used to uh, the way voice meter works, uh, it's very easy to set up these additional modules. So for now, that should do it for uh, uh, for voice meter specifically. So now you have a functioning stream and functioning audio. Now let's get into the accessories. All right, so now what we're going to do is talk briefly about capturing video from your game PC to your uh, streaming PC. Now for most of you, you've probably got this set up already. But I just want to show you some of the things that I found in experimentation. Now, there's two kind of schools of thought when it comes to this, and that is the uh, the first one is capturing the best quality uh, and getting the highest frame rate between your gaming PC and your streaming PC, and then giving yourself some flexibility as to some privacy and that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to show you first is the non-privacy version, but it also results, in my opinion, uh, the best visual fidelity on the streaming PC, and that is cloning your source uh, which is what I do. So in your NVIDIA control panel, you can go in and I have my main source, my primary monitor cloned with my capture card. So everything shown on my monitor will appear on my capture card and thusly on stream if I have that source selected in OBS. Now this will mean that if I have my bank statements, for instance, on my PC showing, it will show up on the stream. So everything shown here, your cursor, desktop, Everything you're doing, your Steam notifications, everything will show up on stream if you have this set up in this way. But it also has the smoothest 60, uh, 60 FPS frame rate as far as I can tell. It brings a lot more of the detail across. Not sure why that is. It just looks the best uh, in my opinion. Now the other way to set it up is to extend. And that way you give yourself a little bit more of a, uh, a, bit, a, bit more of a uh, leeway. So I'm going to extend my primary monitor and make sure that my, there we go, we'll make this the primary here. It is the primary, we're gonna apply this, bam, just like that. All right, so we're gonna work with this. So I've, ex I've now extended, that means that uh, this is now a second monitor. There's nothing gonna be showing in OBS other than uh, essentially what is a second monitor. So there'll be no, uh, no start bar, nothing like that, no no icons, nothing. So now you're gonna need a second installation of OBS on your primary gaming computer, which I luckily already have because I'm prepared. So then you're gonna wanna set up your game capture. Make sure that you have, uh, uh, let's say the foreground window with hotkey 
or any full screen application, just set up a game capture in right here. And don't forget to make sure that your video is set to 60. Your, uh, your FPS value is set to 60 here because you want to be projecting at 60 FPS rate as well. So make sure this is all set up properly. Uh, you can essentially mirror the settings uh, between your two PCs if you like to make it nice and simple and make sure you have a game capture set up. And once that's going, you hit right click on this guy, you go down to full screen projector and you project it, uh, your game capture to your, your capture card. This will prevent things like your Steam notifications, desktop, etc., showing up on stream when you don't want them to. You're projecting only the game source onto your capture card at any given time. This, in my opinion, is slightly worse from a visual fidelity standpoint, but gives you that flexibility of privacy and everything like that, which is a, a, an important thing to keep in mind. That way you're not getting caught by accident. Uh, and I have in the past, not with bank statements specifically, but for like game keys or private messages, that kind of stuff. Got to be mindful. I've used this way for a long time, but I just prefer that high visual fidelity on my stream, so I, I risk it. So all you got to do is, uh, is display that, and you'll see on your gaming PC... Uh, that you have uh, that you have all of that uh, that video going to your capture card independently, and you'll be good to go. So that is all the ways I can think of uh, to set your stream up the best way possible. In this instance, you have set it up so you have a nice crisp video uh, coming from your primary PC to your streaming PC. You've also cleaned up a bunch of the audio issues that you might have had in the past, and you don't have to buy any expensive hardware to make it work. You can use everything digitally, and you can have a nice, easy stream that you can control all from one PC. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is sharing your mouse and keyboard from one PC to another. I use a program called Synergy. Very easy. All you have to do is download and install them on both your gaming PC and your uh, streaming PC. Set up your configuration properly. And once it's all done, you can use your primary computer's um, uh, mouse and keyboard on your gaming PC or, and your streaming PC as well. That means you don't have extra mice, extra keyboards. You can keep your desk nice and tidy, and uh, it just costs a couple of bucks. So with a, an investment of less than $50, you can have uh, an audio setup that's really awesome as well as a, uh, a program to share your mouse and keyboard and that'll clean up your desk considerably. So those are all the things that I use and that you should use as well uh, when it comes to setting up your PC for streaming uh, or, or just capturing your footage on one PC from another. All right, hopefully that was an advanced enough tutorial for those of you who have been seeking something just a little bit meatier as far as a setup video is concerned. Don't forget to leave a like if the video was helpful to you and leave a comment down below if you have any additional um, tips or tricks that you might have learned along your way I'm always looking for ways to improve my stream and pass that along to others. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WTF Moses and on twitch.tv slash WTF Moses as well. If you're looking for a good base to have for a streaming setup, check out the Orion 9000 from Acer Predator. A terrific machine it has been an excellent addition and a very super overpowered addition to my setup. Uh, highly recommend it if you're in the market for something new. So don't forget to check that out. And don't forget to check out the rest of the training room content down below as well. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, guys. And until next time, I'll see you out there.